Scott Keating here from Shepparton. Um, really encourage you to watch the on online prosperity show. Um, I'm going to go into my journey, uh, into my windscreen business, and also into my journey about my life story. And, and Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got Scotty Keating himself. Scotty, how are you going, man? Yeah, having a fantastic day. Thanks for having me on. Very well, thanks. Now, Scott owns a locally operated business that specializes in auto glass re replacement and repair. They actually service within the Goulburn Valley area where they're replacing um, and repairing your windscreen while you're, you know, um, waiting for it. So with over 20 years experience, Scott actually guarantees excellent workmanship with exceptional customer service. That's the reason we brought him on the show today because it's not every day that you actually find somebody who's got a heart like he does and he does his job for all this while. Now, Scott, did I say that right about your business? Yeah, yeah, been been going now. Um, well, I've been been in the industry for I think twenty seven years, and had my own business going for seventeen. Um, yeah, so yeah, so it's been been successful. Well, it's been a journey. It's been a journey from the start, I should say. But lots lots of ups ups and downs. But um, yeah, but yeah, but it's been going very well. So uh, yeah, love love what I do. I get out each day. We. Um, I originally went in, um, well, I actually originally started a mobile business and, and I more, more started it, um, I was more a hobby really because I was bouncing, we had two young kids at the time and, and I was bouncing three, three nights a week and uh, earning good, good money there and um, I sort of started the business more to have a lifestyle and, and be around to spend time with the kids, uh, pick them up from school and, and that sort of thing. And, and yeah, so it sort of started from there, but um, yeah, just sort of kept it as a hobby for a bit longer than what I should have really. <laughs> so, so we're, we're up and going now and you sort of get to you know, 40s and I'm 46 now. And um, yeah, so really starting to uh, create some stuff now instead of, you know, as I say, it was a hobby. Then I actually went into a shop. Um, because a uh, <clears throat> pardon me, a local local business here um, that had been a windscreen shop for uh, fifteen years, they shut down, and so the landlord asked me to move in. So I moved in there, and that was great. Um, had my dad in there with me helping, and and uh, so he did in few windscreens, but he'd come in more in the shop while I ducked out, or he'd, he'd drive customers around and that sort of thing. And then two and a half years ago, um, everything was going really well, um, and. Two and a half years ago, we had um, oh, we were running into the Christmas actually, and my, my wife Sheree and myself were having a chat and, and saying how good everything was. And then um, come the sixth of January, or well, Dad went into hospital on the first of January. We got a phone call off Mum to say the um, shop, uh, that he'd gone into hospital, and then he passed away on the sixth of January. Then on the thirtieth of January, someone was using an angle grinder next door to the shop and burnt the whole shop down. Um, so we lost everything. We lost. We um, I left the memory stick in the, in the shop. At that stage, I wasn't in the cloud and, and left the memory stick in the shop that night for some reason. And so we lost everything there. And then two weeks later, um, my cousin rang me from Melbourne, and um, my auntie had a my dad's only only sibling. His sister had a stroke and passed away two weeks later. So yeah, we had a bit of a turmoil <laughs> six weeks. So um, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so then I've gone back to mobile because the shop burnt down. I didn't have a shop, so going back to mobile, I'm loving it. Like, um, you know, not not the other things, but you know, they say everything happens for a reason, and 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 the um, yeah, with the shop burning down, we, we were operating two days later, um, just beside the burnt shed in in the car park, but um, and just got up and running, and and yeah, so back out mobile now. So I go get my coffee in the morning and. Go enjoy the, watching the sunrise as I drive to my first job. So, um, loving that side of it. So, yeah, so that's sort of the business in a nutshell, pretty much. So, um, but yeah, so you've been, been on a lot of a journey in that 17 years as a business owner. And, and as I say, lots of ups and downs. It was a couple of times I was at close to pulling the pin. Um, but yeah, just couldn't imagine working for someone else again. So, <laughs> it sort of kept me going and, and dug deep and, got out of them, yeah, and, and just learned some new things as we went. And, yeah, in a good good spot now, so back in a good spot. So, yeah. 
Great stuff. Well, that's that's such a turnaround. I mean, obviously, my condolences um, on the passing away of your father, and also, you know, sincere. Um, heartfelt as from a fellow entrepreneur that you, you know, secured a shop and you thought that now that is your thing. And then it all burns down. Like, well, how can somebody come out of that and still become a champion two days later? And, you know, that's a lot of motivation. Now there must be passion involved in the kind of work that you're doing because somebody would have given up. Yeah. I think, um, and I am, it's, it's, it's funny for years, I, I, you know, I've wanted to help people and that sort of thing. And, and at, at times, in the hard times, a couple of times, I've sort of gone, oh, I'm fitting a windscreen, who cares? Like it's a piece of glass, no one cares. But, and I, I suppose through that, um, like as in, yeah, who, who cares who fits your window? But I, I suppose I've put into it is, and I love meeting people, I love helping people. Um, so it's the service side of things that have, have really, um, got my juices going and, and getting me going in that area. So it's, and I suppose when you say about, you know, how, how do you get going two days later? And I did have a lot of people, it was amazing um, when the shop burnt down and also when dad passed away, but uh, we live in, in Shepparton, um, so in a, in a country town and, and, and Shepparton does get a lot of bad press, whether it's the drug use or the over, you know, single mothers and, over obesity and, and that sort of thing but it was amazing when we watched we got a phone call to say the shop was burned down and ran down there or drove down there quickly and while we were standing there watching the shop burn and and flames were jumping out of it it was there was no hope of getting in there i was hoping to get the van my van was at the front door like inside with my toolbox and i'm thinking if i can get my van in the toolbox it's all good we'll keep working but when we got down there the flames were jumping out of the door but and I've had a lot of people say, you know, oh, you've done a good job, you've got up and going. And, and I think a couple of years ago before that, I probably wouldn't have. Um, I went on a big personal journey um, to get to that stage. But as I say, like when we were watching the uh, shop burn down, we, we had, um, I think we had, we had about four people, three or four people who we didn't even know turn up with boxes of cold drinks for us. Um, we had... Um, oh, the offers I had, I, you know, I had um, I had people offer us a, a holiday house for a weekend. We've had I had other businesses offer me um, offer workspace to work in. I had two windscreen businesses, and there's about four windscreen businesses in Shepparton, including myself. I had two other windscreen businesses offer me tools um, because I work in well with them. I don't, you know, I don't go around bagging them, and 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 you know I've helped them out. They've helped me out, so. They offered me some basic tools to keep going because, as I say, I lost all the tools in the fire. Um, yeah, and you just see, I don't know, out of that burning of the shop and it should be devastating and it was a bit devastating watching it, but so much good come out, so much um, loving in the community, so much all that come out of it. And, and um, so, that yeah, there was a massive upside to to that happening. And, and yeah, and I suppose... Um, when you say, how did I get to that stage? Because then I did have people, we got interviewed and, and I suppose losing dad, um, you know, two, three weeks earlier that, you know, we got interviewed by the Czech News and, the, and that sort of thing and, you know, asking how, how it was. And, you know, as I said then, if I could replace one of them, it's not the shop. So the shop's the shop and, and it, I suppose losing dad three weeks earlier really put that into perspective. But, yeah, just, just been on a, on a massive journey. Um, you know, been to, been through, been through. As, as I say, if that had happened, oh, even two years earlier, um, I think I would have crashed um, mentally. Um, I, you know, went went through a stage of I was diagnosed with depression. I'm, I'm 46 now. Maybe when I was about 35, I reckon I was diagnosed with depression. Was when I had the business and and things were getting hard and and, and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, so so really come out of that. Do you mind if I talk about that for a minute? Or that? yeah, yeah. Whoa, oh, I'm I'm listening. I'm. Li thank you so much for sharing. I mean, obviously, this is something that's near and dear to your heart. And if anything, um, the one thing about life, Scott, is we are here to leave, learn, and contribute. And we can't learn everything. And we also learn from other people, from experiences and other people's experiences. So 
this is a time where you know if somebody's actually watching right now they are learning so be my guest let let us know how how much we can and learn and also what other lessons did you personally learn from all of this because you went through quite a lot something yeah. that anybody else could have broke uh, and and we wouldn't have heard about you or your business would be not functioning at the moment but you you went in grab whatever you could salvage and now we've got this massive business that we're talking about today so yeah be my guest and thank you so much for sharing uh, yeah it's um and probably something I, I actually haven't spoken about to many people if anyone but yeah I, I went through um depression and and i i got diagnosed well actually uh, i was struggling um struggling big time being a man, not speaking to anyone, you, you, you keep it in, you just do what you've got to do and and you know, try to wear that. And I suppose over time that wore me down. Um, we went through a stage of having the business, I, I debt collectors knocking on the door because I just didn't care um, and, and that sort of thing. And, and I remember the, the day, or I suppose the turning point of it was I shut the shop one day, I just had enough of everything, shut the shop. Jumped in my car, went to drive to Melbourne because I've got a got an older cousin, um, and she's eleven months older than me. And sort of, we grew up with her in Melbourne, and and she's like an older sister, I suppose, and a bit more level-headed than I was at the time. <laughs> so I go down, and she's my bit of a calming influence, and and probably still is today. But but yeah, so I jumped in the car and started driving to Melbourne, and it was before the new highway, and I turned down a back road, and and I was driving, and I just remember being totally numb driving down there and, and as I turned the corner, I had people ringing me because obviously the shop was shut, people were looking for me, my wife was looking for me and, and I just didn't want to speak to anyone. Turned this corner and, and this bitumen road was about a car and a half wide, it was a narrow sort of thing, full of gum trees down the sides and I remember turning the corner, I had the, had the windows down in the car in the Commodore and, and, and driving down there and, and I remember I remember the trees whistling past me because, as I say, it was a narrow sort of sort of road. Yeah. And I looked down, I was doing 140, and the trees were just <laughs> past me. Mm. And as I say, numb, just no feeling whatsoever. I got looked down again, and and the car was swaying. I was doing 190 down this road with the the trees were just whistling whistling past me. And I got got to a start, and I remember, and this is probably, and I had a lot of negative voices in my head at this time, and this is probably the only time that I'm, I thank, thank God, thank whatever for whoever for the for the voice. But because I remember saying to myself, well, I turn right into a tree or left into a tree. Well, you know, my family would be better off without me. Whoa. Uh, and just numb. And I remember my voice saying, without swearing, I, I remember my voice saying, you'll probably stuff this up as well. Um, as in the which way to turn or you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, and I remember thinking oh, I'm just going to end up crippled or something and be a bigger burden on my family than than what it is and so I remember pulling over bursting into tears wow uh, devastated and and anyway I, I, I turned around come home I actually threw my threw my phone out the window as I turned that corner because I was just sick of people ringing me and, and wow. pulled up at the corner and I found my phone I don't know how I did that but I found the phone and, and I come home, went to the doctor, got diagnosed with depression, um, got more depressed because the doctor said I was depressed. Um, <laughs> it was real weird, but wow. uh, yeah, did that and, and went on medication and, and, and for the next while I was on the medication and I had a turning point that, um, and I can't remember exactly what it is, but my daughter, my oldest daughter, something good happened for her and I didn't care. Um, so I wasn't sad anymore, but I wasn't happy. And, and I was a person of extremes and, and I just couldn't be happy. Like I was, oh yeah, that's good. Um, and it was something, and I can't remember what it was, but it was something big for her. And I had, it was just numbness. And I remember sitting down and, and going, this is ridiculous. Like I, I, I've got no, you know, no sadness, but I'm, I'm not happy. And then I was, I was reading all these things and you know, that when you got mental and I, and I should say now, I'm no expert on, on depression, I'm no doctor, I know anything like that. But I remember sitting down and for myself, I, I remember just just having, I remember thinking back and I remember my youngest memories, I suppose, were we grew up in Tra Tala Marine in Melbourne. And, yeah, yeah. And I was four and I remember being a kinder because, well, four or five, I remember being at the kinder. And, and I remember from four to, say, 13, 
being so happy and carefree. And I remember people saying, I say it to, we say it to our son now that you'll never die of a heart attack because you just don't care about anything. Like, <laughs> oh, he's going. And, and just this turnaround, I remember reading articles on, on depression and, oh, once you've got it, you're always going to have it. And even recently with uh, Buddy Franklin, they were saying, you know, he's got depression, he's always going to have it. And, and I was thinking back and going, well, I wasn't born with this. I, I never, I wasn't born with depression. I was happy. Like, so how can I be happy again? And, and then I started looking in my own life and I just had so many negatives in my life that I had, I had addictions, um, major drinking problem um, on more binge drinking on weekends, but I'd be drinking a couple of bottles of scotch on a weekend while I was bouncing. Um, not good, but um, every weekend, like it was just, uh, I wouldn't drink through the week, but I just, I had all these addictions. I had all these negativities, negativities in my life. And, as I say, I do things too extreme. So I remember with depression, I used to wake up at one o'clock in the morning and, and um, everything was bigger and badder because I had, um, it was just me. Everyone else was asleep. You had no, not, not that I spoke to anyone, but I had no distractions. And so what I did, and so I had a look, as I say, and I had so many negatives in my life. I, I removed all of the news on TV. I, I removed all papers. Good uh, on you, mate. Good on you. Because TV uh, news, there's never any good that comes uh, out of any 3 a.m. news. You know, it's all regurgitation of all the bad things in life. And I'm, I'm really happy you went through and, and, and removed that. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Yeah, so I sort of went through and, and removed all that. The only time I'd read a paper was being in a smaller country town. I'd, I'd sort of know if the what days, what sports are on, and if the kids kids play a lot of sport, and if they were, they were going to be in the paper, I'd read the back page, a couple back pages, and then that was it. I sort of, um, yeah, and I just, just replaced things, and, and I remember, um, you know, people say Google's a, you know, mass, obviously a massive search engine, but for me, YouTube was a massive search engine, because I'd get up in the morning and I'd Google, like, well, search engine in YouTube, motivational anything i used to box so put motivational boxing motivational business motivational life motivational whatever and i'd watch that for 5 10 15 minutes in the morning um and i just found that i'd start pumping that in i i started um through the day if i could put a cd of you know a, a workshop or a, a seminar or something in I'd, I'd listen to that through the day before i go to bed i'm not a I am a, well, I say I'm not a big reader. I've got books everywhere in this room, but um, I'm a slow reader. Um, I never read a book at, at high school, but I just started reading before I went to bed. That you know, it might be 10 minutes, and it might only be three pages, four pages, but mm -hmm. I started reading that before I went to bed. And I, I think the big one I did was I filled an iPod, which would be beside my bed somewhere, it doesn't work anymore, but a little iPod, um, and filled it full of, you know, paint wires and Deepak Chopras and Tony Robbins and all these people just put seminars, audio books, everything on that. So when I wake up at one o'clock in the morning, um, I put that in my ears and still everything was big and bad and, and but I'd fall asleep eventually with that positive going in. Um, yeah, and just after time I, I just I just got to a stage where and I and I pumped pumped positives in, like remove negative people out of my life. Um, I one, one thing that amazed me on Facebook, I, I, I used to put um, positive quotes, or I still do, I suppose, but put positive quotes up or, or join um, Facebook pages that were all positive quotes. And mm -hmm. I actually lost three friends, and these are real friends, not just Facebook, but on Facebook, I lost three friends because I was too positive. Um, okay. I found that interesting. Um, but they're going, you're putting too much positive up, so they defriended me. Um, but yeah, so, and, and I find, um, Actually, I was saying the other day to my wife, I'm, I'm actually finding Facebook's on this day. Yeah, you, know, you go on this day and you can see what happened a year ago, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually finding it very interesting to see because I can see where my thinking was five years ago, four years ago, ten years ago, sort of thing. And and um, yeah, it's funny, my thinking mimics where I was at the time too. So um, yeah, I think like Wayne Dwyer says, change, change your thinking, change your change your outcome sort of thing so and yeah so I just went through all of that and and i'm so glad i did because as i say if this stuff had to happen then then three things in that six to seven weeks i think it would have sunk me or i would have gone very backwards but um yeah just just where i got to it was just yeah just amazing it was well, 
Well, congratulations and good on you for not being selfish. Because obviously when you were driving in that car at like 190 and deciding whatever you, who, who would you have become? You would probably have maimed yourself and left all your kids to worry about you. So that's a lot of selfish things going on. But then obviously thinking back again, you couldn't have handled it. You couldn't have <clears throat> because the things that were around you were not supportive enough for you to know that there's hope at the end of the tunnel. So I'm really happy that you did a whole 360, not a 360, 180. And you left that bad, um, not bad, but that disillusioned, depressed, Scott, <clears throat> and now we are talking today. It, 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 it sounds like there's been a lot of work, trials and tribulations, and I really, really appreciate the journey. It hasn't been, it hasn't been easy. And there's a, there's a lot of lessons to pick up from this. Like I was just sitting in there just going, wow. Oh my God. And I thought I had a story. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's yeah, just just amazing, and it's and that that's that's where I'm now. Like I, I get out and help people, and and as I said, uh, you know, the video that you saw that I I, I often get out in the morning. I love to get up early anyway, but yeah, yeah. So and, yeah, and as you say, for years it was we were talking before that when the sun doesn't rise, and for years it didn't rise for me. Mm. Um, it was there, but in my head, no sunrise. There was no um, but now, yeah, I just look at that sunrise each day and, and as I said in that video, I think you saw that, you know, I'm, I'm, if I see the sunrise, I'm, I'm blessed with the moment, I'm blessed, blessed with the star of the day, but I don't know if I'm going to see the sunset or not. It's, it's, so I've got to milk this day as much as I can. I've got to enjoy this day, hanging around awesome people now, you know, connected with, with yourself and just as we we're talking earlier as well with the circle now, like the circle you hang around and, and the energy it brings and yeah, just yeah. gone from real bad to just loving life, loving life and loving the people around me and just loving it. I'm loving the new you here now because had I, I wouldn't have met you if you were still in, in, in the slums, nobody would have gotten to experience now what you've got to offer. What are we to expect now from Scott now that you are now this new revived, um, I'm not sure, you know, in your personal journey, what, what are we now to expect? And obviously those people that defriended you on Facebook, they were never meant to be anywhere because right. people are only there as part of your journey, um, you know, just so that they fulfill a purpose. And if somebody really needs to go and leave, let them be because that part of their journey has co been completed um, with the part that was supposed to meet up with yours as well. Now, what are we supposed to expect now from this new vibrant Scotty kidding <laughs> that's God the world by the horns waking up before sunset and looking at the sun and, you know, just you know, <laughs> motivating us as we go along. I, I really was passionate. I was sitting at the edge of my chair watching that video and I was like, wow. I mean, seriously, I, I do sun gazing and I don't know if you understand that whole part of getting the energy from the sun, but I was getting energy from what you were saying and how you were being so uh, passionate about it all. And I was like, well, I ain't seen nothing like this before. And, and you, you know, it translated and I, I want to know what's, what's next now, because you got us excited. You went our appetite. Now there's gotta be more. I think, um, yeah, there, there is, there, there's, um, and, and with the windscreen business, and I'm, I'm working the windscreen business on my own at the moment, but getting very close to putting someone on because I, I do want to, not, I still, as I say, enjoy, I, I, I love fitting windscreens, I love getting out there doing that, um, but yeah, I, I think I also have more to offer. Um, I suppose, I, I see some people, and not that anything's wrong, right or wrong, but for me, it wasn't, I didn't feel it was right to share my journey until I got to this point um, because I've, I've just seen a lot of people go and help other people and, and they don't spend their time to fix themselves. They sort of get lost in helping other people and they're still a bit broken. Um, and I'm not saying that's a fact, you know, each their own and, and what everyone decides to do, that's up to them. But that that's the way I see it. Um, so I, I felt like I had to go 
fix myself or remend myself or become whole, whole and and then I could help other people um, through sharing that. And I, I'm yeah at that stage now, so I'm, I'm a bit what to expect. I'm expecting big things. Expect big things from me. From which direction? I'm unsure at this this stage. Is this is all as I say? Even that story um, about the trees and and geez, I'd, I'd be lucky if. I'm not even sure I shared it with the, I probably did share it with the doctor. Um, so there's not many, uh, I'm not even sure. My wife probably knows it. I, I'm not sure anyone else does. Um, so now everyone does. It's it's out there for the world. It's all. Well, thank you. Because now sto- uh, from that story, that's where we're going to bring out your program. Because your life story and your life experience have a great impact on other people that are probably going through the same now you went through where life was okay then you went into a slump and then you brought yourself back up again now imagine how many people are still at this stage that you can actually help figure out where they are to where they possibly want to be and if you tell them their story they can be motivated obviously like i continuously stay say um you know um scott Thank you, first of all, for, you know, using this platform to bring out that story. But I want us to amplify it now and make it of greater importance, right? So that we can put market value and help other people that might be going through what you're going through right now, right? We're all here to make a difference in this world, all right? So we do this by actually packaging our knowledge and experience so that other people can learn off of us. Because in life, like I said, we're here to live, learn, and contribute. You've lived, you've learned the lessons, now is your time to contribute. Yep. Yep. All right? So other people are still in the leaving phase where they're just hoping and praying and not seeing the sun like you're saying. All right? And I can see the Scotty process of actually stop living from day to day and start seeing the sun there's hope at the end of the tunnel i can see that program there we we can talk after the show and see how we can bring that out (laughs) but at at the end of the day you you see you see where this is all coming from right yeah yeah certainly do Yeah, yeah you do you do have a story and i really do appreciate you for bringing it out to us and it's, it's something that not a lot of people realize that they're going through, but up until they get to the other side, but somebody might not get through to the other side. They might be doing 190 like you were and thinking, should I go left or should I go right? Now we need to stop them before they get into that car. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. We've got work to do, don't we? We do. We've got lots, of, lots and lots of work to do. It's, um, yeah. Great stuff. Well, I, I, I'm so excited that we had a chance to speak today, Scotty, because um, this story otherwise would not have been aired or gone anywhere else. And I really do appreciate that you've used our platform to bring that out. And I'm hoping that the people that are actually watching right now, if they're in the Golden Valley area or in their Shepparton area, they would know who to go to um, and um, get their window screen fixed. But we now have something on our hands now. We now have a man that has learned his lesson and is now wanting to contribute to humanity. Thank you so much, sir. This has been phenomenal in as much as you did not realize that what you just did was enlighten people that where you are is temporary. It is. All right. Anybody can be, do and have a life that they can choose and, and um, live by. So do you have any last words just in case somebody's watching this and they are not really convinced that you can turn around your life and actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Yeah, I, I think, um, and it, it, it's funny, and it's funny how the universe, I find the universe works. And I went to a um, seminar oh, a couple of weeks ago with Travis Jones, TJ, um, yep, and Travis and Liv Jones and their team. And it, it, it was funny that we, we learned a lot of stuff over two days and then, there was one big takeaway I got, and then I have another mentor in Aaron Sansoni, who I think you know, yep, yeah, you know as well. And he did a Facebook Live on the Monday, Monday or Tuesday. He was up at Sales Mastery in, in Queensland and did a Facebook Live. And it's this one thing really hit home because for years, um, and this is probably other thing that helped, not help me get depressed, but 
work towards depression as well was we set goals. We, we get told to set goals all the time. And so we all go out. It's easy to set a big goal, big dream. We can all do that. And I found, and where it really hit home for me was when, when I become, you know, we've been, been married for 23 years now, been with my wife for 24, 25 years. And when, when we got together, I, and whether, you know, well, I sort of told her, you know, what life I would provide for her, the kids, and, and all, we're going to do this, I'm going to do that, and, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, that for you sort of thing, and none of it, or none of it happened. Um, and, and I was getting frustrated, because since I left school at 16, since 17, I've always worked a full-time job, and at least one to two part-time jobs, so I worked hard, uh, worked long hours, all of that, and, and nothing was happening, and, and that probably depressed me as well but but then as I say with, with TJ with what he said and Aaron what he said was it was a big takeaway about not I'm not who I need to be to achieve them goals and and that was my big takeaway in the last few weeks I suppose and again looking back on Facebook and, and setting these goals and I'm now seeing and it's not about being different it's about being better and and you know, whether it's with the business, it's whether I've got to get better at finances or marketing or or um, sales or whether it's in my life, I've got to be more, you know, show more empathy, be more loving, all that sort of thing. And and, and I think sometimes we're, we're told to set big goals and that, but we're not shown how to achieve them and that we have to bring people into our life. And, you know, over the last little while, you know, and bless, bless the, you know, we, you know, we've hooked up together, our, you know, we've, we've come together and, um, loving your daily show at, at two o'clock. Um, sometimes I don't catch it, but I watch the after version of it. Love, love that. Um, but yeah, even with with seminars I've been to, meeting different people, just bringing a different energy into you into your world. And and as I say, if anyone's struggling, it's hard because I never thought I was a victim. Um, I, I never because I always looked at someone else who had a bigger me victim mentality than me. I go, they're a victim, I'm not. But now, as I say, looking back on Facebook, lot of Facebook. Uh, on this day, I'm looking back going, you're a victim, Scott. <laughs> you're a victim mentality. And even though you didn't think you did. And, and as, as I say, if anyone's really struggling, really look in your life and, 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 and weigh up whether you've got more negatives or positives in your life. And I think there's a big chance. Well, I know for me that I had a massive, massive amount of negative and very little positive in my life. And, and it's a matter of working hard and turning that around, changing. Some, it's not just changing little things at a time as i say get up in the morning put youtube on and find something positive what's your two o'clock show <laughs> that'll get people bouncing <laughs> <laughs> bouncing there with the energy just get energy around you get positive energy as you say whether it's the sun and i i feel the same when i stand in front of the sun i feel feel that um the energy coming from the sun and the positive energy so um yeah if anyone's struggling just just yeah, talk to people to start with because that's something that most of us men don't do because um, it's not manly. Um, go talk to people because as you get older, seriously, people want to listen, people want to help. And sometimes it's just getting it out. Um, but replace any negatives you've got in your life with some positives. So as I say, get on, read books, listen to you know, audio books. If you, if you don't read, get around seminars. There's so many seminars that... A next to nothing to go to and it's not even just the seminar it's the positive people in that circle it's people you hook up it, with on it off, doesn't it the positivity you the circle you've got around you you know and i see some of the friends you've got around around yourself and the just the positive energy they bring it's it's just just amazing and it changes your world and, and you sit there and i was one of the ones going oh nothing's ever going to work it's never going to work and once i changed or got better at things and, and changed the negatives to positives that just went it started going bang and we're ready to ride this wave. So Und far like it. Yeah. Understandable. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I mean, this has probably been one of the best episodes we've had in a while, whereby you just went in raw with your story of, you know, uh, depression. And then you gave us the whole journey of the turnaround. And now you are now coming in to contribute. It actually plays in with our tagline of leave learn and contribute so i'm so excited we got you on the show today and thank you so much for you know the, the bravery that you've just uh, given us with your story your time 
and just your awesome nature that you now have and that you you didn't let that all go to waste and i'm really excited that we now have a clear vision because you've given us the windscreen to the future yeah <laughs> no looking in the rear vision mirror anymore <laughs> rear vision gone. so you actually will be fixing people's future vision yep even yep. if it's on their own car thank you so much scotty this has been fantastic <laughs> no, it's been excellent thank thanks for the time and yeah i'm glad i could share that story with you not a problem sir thank you thank you You've done this before. You were just trying to trip me. You've uh, done this uh, before. Uh, <laughs> oh, <I'll do. laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. Well, thank you.